Okay. Now, let us consider a reaction of the nucleus X with a particle A. So, we can write like this. So, nucleus X reacts with particle A and as a result, it gives nucleus Y and another particle B. Now, often we use this notation to indicate this nuclear reaction. Now, let us try to explain the reaction probability, how it depends on the nuclear details. Okay. Now, you see, after penetration of the Coulomb barrier, what happens is that an excited compound nucleus, C star, compound nucleus, C star, it is formed. Now, it contains both original particles. What about the level of excitation? Well, the level of excitation in this compound nucleus is dependent on the kinetic energy and also the binding energy brought along by the newly added particle. Now, this is just basic ideas about compound nucleus theory and this will be important in our astrophysical calculations. That's why I am discussing this. Now, you also remember that this compound nucleus, light jaliya now, huh? this compound nucleus may decay after a short time, which will still be long enough for the added nucleons to forget owing to interactions within the compound nucleus, that is their history, a process for which only of the order of 10 to the power minus 21 being necessary. Now the decay then pro depends only on the energy of this. So decay depends on energy. Now there are several possible channels each having different probability of decay. Right. So we can have this channel x plus a or we can have y1 plus b1 another channel so various channels or output possibilities so you see the first possibility is basically sort of reverting back to the original that means reproduction of the original particles while this one the last one we can also have something like this say c plus gamma what is this again the same nucleus but in a de-excited state same as the compound nucleus and the de-excitation is possible by the emission of by a gamma ray emission and the what about the others these are basically particle emissions where neutron proton alpha particle can be emitted right now so you see the possibility that a given energy level of C star can decay via a certain channel requires consideration of various conservation laws. Okay. Now let me show you a schematic sketch of the levels of the compound nucleus. So here I am showing you a schematic sketch of the various energy levels in the compound nucleus C star. Okay. So compound nucleus C star. Now the zero of this energy here is taken as corresponding to the zero velocity of x and a at infinity. So right. Now for initial energy E1 say this one the reaction will be non-resonant while for E2 you see the particles and x say find a resonance in the compound nucleus here and what about this e mean what is this this is basically the minimum excitation energy above the ground level for particle emission okay so right so what we are seeing here is basically the different levels of the compound nucleus c star right and you see these levels can be of various types. Say for example, what is this mean, E mean as I just explained? This is basically 
the minimum energy required to remove a nucleon from the ground state to infinity with a zero velocity that is to the level e is equal to zero here now this corresponds to the atom ionization energy as well now what about levels above e mean so this is atom ionization right energy okay now there are other levels as well now they are obviously below this e mean they can decay only by electromagnetic transitions with the emission of gamma rays which are relatively improbable and hence their lifetime is large so these are basically stationary levels of small energy with gamma and we can write this gamma as h cross by tau which also you can get from the heisenberg's uncertainty principle so these levels basically correspond to the discrete bound atomic states now this compound nucleus you see will not immediately expel a particle if its energy is somewhat above this e mean since the sharp potential you see it rises this potential rise will hold it back at least for some time eventually it can leave the potential well by the tunneling effect and this is how you must remember we explained the alpha particle decay right now and this tunneling effect will is the same as by requiring the calculation of the tunneling probability so there can be quasi stationary levels above e mean that have an appreciable shorter lifetime and as a result they are considerably larger so shorter lifetime means larger width over here compared to these levels and since they can also decay via the much more part probable particle emission right now this probability will clearly increase strongly with the increasing energy here and this results in corresponding decrease of tau and increase of width now above a certain energy say e max this width will become larger than the distance between the neighboring levels and their complete overlap will yield a continuum of states like this here instead of separate discrete levels so you see next one now so the possibility or you can say the possible existence of this quasi stationary levels above e mean they requires particular attention and this will be the ones which will play a role in astrophysics now let us consider an attempt to produce the compound nuclear c star by particles x plus a with gradually increasing energy of their relative motion at large distances okay so what will we observe what we will observe is this you see so if this is energy and this is the cross section and these are the energy levels so what we will observe is this and what are these bumps sorry this is how what are these bumps they will correspond to these energy levels you see this one e1 e2 and so on okay so you see this reaction probability will simply increase with the penetration probability here now if e is in a region either without quasi stationary level or between these two levels this is what will happen however if e coincides with one such level the colliding particle it finds a resonance 
here this is the result of the resonance and can form the compound nucleus much more easily what happens is that at such resonance energies e resonance say the probability for the reaction and also the cross section is enhanced as you can see from this figure and as a result we have resonant peaks in fact this is not a linear plot this is a log plot and so these resonance peaks are sometimes several powers of 10 above this one so this is not a normal plot again now what about the energy dependence of this resonance <clears throat> so energy dependence of this cross section this has a form in fact of the order of you see e minus e resonance whole square plus this width by 2 whole square this is the form now at resonance this cross section for the reaction of particles x and a they can nearly reach its maximum value so at resonance at a resonance this sigma it reaches the maximum value which is the geometrical cross section and from quantum mechanics you know what is the value of this geometrical cross section simply pi lambda cross square where this is the de Broglie wavelength so this lambda db is basically h cross by p equal to h cross by root over 2me. Now we have used the non-relativistic relation between the two of them. And remember this m is here the reduced mass. So you see the meaning of this. Uh, just a second. Let me write down this energy dependence of this cross section. Let me give it a term, say, J of E. This is the energy dependence at near resonance. Okay. So, okay. Now, this meaning of pi lambda square is clear because according to quantum mechanics, particles moving with momentum C, each other, not as precise point, but smeared out over a length of de Broglie wavelength. So, the dependence on sigma of sigma on energy e can is roughly you see it is proportional to first we observe that this is proportional to the penetration probability next we observe that this is there is an energy dependence as well next we observe here that it also has a dependence on pi lambda square so if we consider all these effects then we see that sigma of e is proportional to pi lambda square p0 at e or penetration probability into you know, this bright wigner resonance term okay now okay now for energy below coulomb barrier we can take p from previous values right now also we can take p0 as we have considered previously and also what about the single resonance for a case of single resonance we have the j factor that we also have considered before however if we are far from resonance so this is near single resonance far from resonance what happens is that this term goes to 1 there is no dependence energy dependence now in any case with or without this uh, resonance this is always proportional to this lambda square into p0 this is with or without resonance right 
and as a result you see we can write this sigma e as a result of this we can write this sigma e term as equal to s into this is basically what 1 by e so s into 1 by e into this penetration probability or basically e to the power just a second sometimes it is written like this e to the power minus 2 pi eta also we can use the eg term as well but this is more or less the general form note that here all remaining effects are contained within this s term and this is known as astrophysical s factor so basically this factor contains all intrinsic nuclear properties of the reaction under consideration and it can be calculated however we have to rely most of the time on experiments now why is this so you see this s is not fixed it is a slowly varying function of energy s e and there are several difficulties in its measurement now when i say measurement i mean measurement in the lab sometimes it is not even possible to measure them why because of very small cross sections and so they are rather feasible only at high energies so the measurements is possible above say 0.1 mv but th this is still roughly a factor of 10 larger than those energy which are relevant for astrophysical applications so what we do sometimes we have to extrapolate the measured ac so we do what do we do is that we extrapolate the measured ac downwards over a rather long range of energy now this can be done quite reliably for non resonant reaction this is okay for non resonant reactions in which case s is nearly constant or a slowly varying function of e right the real problem arises in case of resonances in the energy range over which our extrapolation is included and then the results become quite uncertain now these experiments they are normally performed in underground laboratories why because the cross section is very small and in our measurement if there are other background counts from cosmic rays from other background sources say for example the cement the earth and all that so we have to remove reduce this and that's why we go underground and we also use special detectors low background counting detectors for this measurements and doing so it is sometimes possible to measure the nuclear cross sections again of at least a few nuclear reactions as at energies as low as 10 to 30 kv this is possible and this is the energy relevant for nuclear processes in stellar interiors okay now any questions so we have completed the second part right so we have considered about the reaction cross sections and we discussed this very important topic of astrophysical s factor i have little bit discussed about their measurements how they are performed now coming back to reaction cross section nuclear 
reaction cross section now you must remember that i have already derived this nuclear reaction how to estimate in the composition equation section this we have discussed previously i am just going to write down the result here so basically the result which we derived there it was like this r i x so basically the reaction rate reaction rate was written like this r i x is equal to n x n i two species so reaction rate between species i and x so x i then the cross section right sigma e followed by the velocity we did not include the maxwell boltzmann calculations over here we just write it down as it is and then we have the ne by n term de so this is how we estimated i have already discussed using diagrams all that stuff now what i am going to do i am now going to include the maxwell boltzmann distribution in this part and then do the calculations also after including the effect of penetration factor so right so let me write it down so now incorporating the penetration factor factor s factor and maxwell boltzmann distribution in the speed averaged reaction cross section we will get i'm just writing down the expression and the expression is you see this now instead of x and i i am now using this term a b between the two species so they are species a and species b and the term is n a into n b and this is the you see fusion rate per unit volume so n a into n b next term is 8 by pi and this is mr or rest mass to the power half 1 by kbt to the power 3 by 2 right this is coming from the you remember this uh, all the terms previously discussed so i am using this and as a result you will get this and multiplied what, what about the s factor now comes the s factor so speed averaging here is the s factor into exponential this minus e by kbt minus eg by e to the power half de this is the term so fusion rate per unit volume this is what we have now you can note certain very important things from this expression itself what are they the first is that this na and nb this is basically gives you the number of possible reactions okay now where is this 1 by kbt 3 by 2 terms come this come from the this term this comes from the maxwell boltzmann distribution okay this term comes from there and we already know that this ac astrophysical s factor so it tells us about the strength of nuclear interactions right 
Now, what about this term, E g by E? It indicates basically the probability of tunneling through Coulomb barrier. And what about this E by KVT? Again, this is the Maxwell Boltzmann thermal energy energy distribution. Okay, so I have explained to you each of the terms over here. Now, why have I written this part out separately? There is a reason because you see there is energy dependence over here. So let me discuss this part separately. So the energy dependence of reaction rate right and this is given by this term 0 to infinity AC into exponential minus let me put this term first E g by E to the power half minus E by KBT okay D any questions okay so this is what we did previously and now uh, just a second maybe I have skipped this part okay okay so this is the term right now so <clears throat> we can write this as separately again 0 to infinity AC exponential this time I am separating the terms to the power minus E g by E to the power half and into exponential minus E by KBT and then D. Now you see the nuclear S factor this one so we have three terms one two and three three terms you see this nuclear S factor it varies only slowly with energy we know apart from near low energy resonances so essentially all of the energy dependence come from the exponential terms these two now this term you see this one it increases as kinetic energy of the nuclei increase but this one this decreases so the product of the two is small at high and low energies and they become significant only over a range of intermediate energies and this behavior in let me show you in diagram okay so you see this is the fusion probability and this is energy and you see this is your uh, tunneling probability okay and here we have the Maxwell distribution distribution okay and the result of these two when the two terms are multiplied is that we will get something like this and this is the gamma peak okay now you see what I am showing you here is basically the behavior 
of these two terms in this plot I am showing you here. And what we observe is that as a result of this, this distribution, this peaks at an energy and this is known as the gamma peak. And what is the value of this gamma peak? This energy gamma peak. This has energy E0 gamma peak. Let me write it down. So the value of E0 is basically this is related to Eg as you will see Eg into KBT by 2 whole square and this one to the power 1 by 3. Okay. Now this is interesting. And in fact, I would like you to show this yourself. So, this is a homework. So, show that this distribution, this energy dependence of cross section, dependence of nuclear reaction cross section peaks at E0. It's just a maximum minima problem. I'd like you to do this yourself. This is not very hard, but also quite instructive. Okay. Any questions till now? Bolo. So basically, we have considered the concept of gamma peak. So the energy dependence of reaction rate. Okay. From there, we considered only these two terms and from there we introduced the concept of this gamma peak introduced here. Okay, now next, so we have just talked about this thing. Okay, so you see we have, so we have this gamma peak and so this is your uh, peak energy or gamma peak energy you see this is important also this width or width of the gamma window right you see this is gamma window so it has got two very important attributes. One is peak and another is this window width. This is also very important. How you see, because from this figure, from this figure, what we will observe, we are observing here. Okay, so let me again tell you what this figure tells us basically. This we are basically seeing the effect of the two terms of the exponential, right? When the the product is made, and what we are observing is that the energy at which the fusion rate is maximum, we get a peak. Note that this is not entirely a Gaussian peak, and this peak is known as gamma peak. And the region on the either side of the peak in which the fusion probability is significant, this is known as the gamma window. This is what we are observing. So, what next? Next is the gamma window width. So, you see, there is a range of energies. A large number of energies are possible. Which, if they are in this gamma window, then the reaction rate will be significant. So basically there is a certain range of energies or window. We don't have to calculate over all the energy ranges to find or to estimate where the reaction rate to estimate the entire reaction cross section. We have to consider the reaction rate where it is maximum and this is maximum in this part in this gamma window. Now in order to examine the fusion rate in the vicinity of the gamma peak the quantity we have to 
quantify basically the width of this window. So let me rewrite this term as you see RAB uh, just a second okay so let me rewrite this as RAB is equal to NA NB then the two terms and then your integration term AC now this time you see what I am writing into exponential minus F E D E okay and what is F E this minus of F E is equal to your this term minus E G by E to the power half plus E by K B T The entire concept here occurs because you see of this fact that the energy dependence is different in these two terms. Here it is in denominator, here it is in numerator and as a result of this we are getting this peak. Okay. Fine. Now, to investigate the width of the window, let us do a Taylor series expansion. So, of Fe and if we do that then you will see that if we consider the entire terms of the Taylor series expansion then I am writing down the result the result is like this Fe is equal to 3 Eg by Kbt to the power 1 by 3 plus half of you can also check this yourself this expansion this is also maybe a homework activity for you check this if it is so half of e minus e0 square into 3 by 2 to the power 1 by 3 and what about the energy dependence energy dependence is eg minus 1 by 3 and kbt minus 5 by 3 plus other terms now you see so we can rewrite this term as 3 times eg by kbt to the power 1 by 3 plus e minus e0 divided by this delta by 2 to the power square and this delta is the gamma width so the gamma width is the delta which is given by this value 3 to the power half into 2 to the power 1 by 3 into eg to the power 1 by 6 into kbt to the power 5 by 6. Now this characterizes the range of energy. So this characterizes the range of energies. over which the fusion is likely to occur okay so with this we can write
you see the entire reaction cross section the integrand for the reaction part it can be right so reaction rate so this is equal to basically again you can write na nb then this 8 by pi mr or reduced mass term into 1 by kbt to the power 3 by 2 into 0 to infinity ac into exponential minus 3 eg by 4 kb t to the power 1 by 3 again into exponential minus e minus e0 divided by delta by 2 to the power whole square de okay so this is what we have now you see this gamma width can also be written as sometimes we also write it uh, like this eg by kbt to the power 1 6 into kbt and what about the half width so basically half width is approximately equal to eg by kbt to the power 1 sixth into just kbt now it is important to note the energy dependence you see the energy dependence of the fusion rate here uh, it resembles it resembles so this energy dependence it resembles the form which form this form e to the power minus x minus x average whole square divided by twice sigma square right so you see this is symmetric about e0 our energy distribution and has a shape known as bell curve or known as a bell curve a normal distribution or a Gaussian distribution right any questions last part so you see the width of fusion window which we described previously using the 1.8 term uh, it's you can see its physical significance significance when say at e is equal to e0 plus minus delta by 2 then what happens at this value the Gaussian term term it becomes exponential minus 1 or 1 by e what does means what does this mean this means that plus minus delta by 2 is the energy range over which the fusion probability falls by a factor 1 by e that is 0 0.37 from its maximum 
at e0 okay now you see as we have just found out since delta by 2 is of the order of eg to the power 1 by 6 into kbt to the power 5 by 6 so we can write the gamma window and be expressed as e0 plus minus delta by 2 or basically approximately e0 plus minus eg by kbt to the power 1 6 1 by 6 into kbt okay that's it so please do the homeworks as i have mentioned and then we can discuss the rest of this in the classroom any questions